Hi everyone! So here we are, one year later. One year ago today, I posted my coming out video and my life changed forever. I wanted to make this video because I get asked uh, about coming out all the time just in my personal life. I get asked pretty much every single day on the internet. And I think that big anniversaries like this, like significant moments in your life are worth honoring and reflecting on. And this has been a big year for me. <laughs> so I wanted to share some of my reflections and my first year of being out <laughs> with all of you because it's been big and it's been amazing and it's been ugly and it's been hard and it's been beautiful and it really truly has been a whole experience. I guess I'm going to start off with basically answering the question that I just get all the time, which is what has it been like? And my answer to that is this entire video. Coming out has been a lot of things, but the thing that really stands out to me the most is how my relationships in my personal life have changed significantly and they have changed for the better. I think I realized when I came out that my relationships were taking a step towards becoming more intimate, but I didn't really know what that entailed because I had never had intimate friendships, relationships on this kind of level ever in my life. And so when I came out, I stepped into who I know myself to be and there was nothing stopping me. There was nothing closing me off from connecting with the people in my life. And it was fucking scary. <laughs> it's terrifying. It's terrifying to actually be intimate with people, whether it's in a platonic way or in a romantic way, because it's not all sunshine and daisies. Allowing yourself to be true and to be intimate means showing you're ugly and showing the parts of yourself that you may have felt ashamed about and maybe you still do feel some kind of shame. It's about allowing your true self to shine in all of its various and different shades. Every day that looks a little bit different. It was really scary for me to put myself out there even with people that I know love me and would just do anything for me and I would do anything for them, but it's still scary. I was taking a risk by revealing not only my sexuality, but so many other parts of myself. And my friendships have become so much stronger, so much more intimate, and they are so whole and beautiful. And I think my very best friends, Eileen, Carrie, and Kat, have just been these incredible rocks for me. They have been so important in this journey for me. They have provided so much support, so much understanding without judgment. And I am grateful to have them in my lives. And I think that we've reached this really beautiful point in all of our lives just in general where we are striving for the same thing. We all want intimate friendships and we are learning how to lean on each other and ask for help and to how to receive help. It's really, really special and something that I've never experienced before and it is so spectacular to be experiencing this with such a wonderful group of women that I absolutely love. On the romantic side of things, I had my first serious relationship with a woman and I had my first breakup after my first serious relationship with a woman. And those are really significant moments in my life. And I learned so much about myself. I think some people view coming out as like this thing that you do and then you're done and you're good and you're set. But that 
it wasn't how it was for me. I came out and I kept coming out because it made me want to explore myself even more and have a deeper understanding of who I am. So coming out was really just a stepping stone on my way to self-discovery. Granted, a very large stepping stone, but it really opened the door to all of these other things that I hadn't been acknowledging in the past or I had been ashamed of or, you know, whatever. All these things that we harbor inside of ourselves as human beings. I decided to get in touch with my true feelings and face any kind of guilt, shame, resentment that I had been harboring over the course of my life. Um, instead of pushing them away, I decided to invite them to the table and acknowledge them. Coming out has also been a really big journey for me in discovering my personal relationship with anger and how I express that and my fears about it. I describe coming out as a whole experience. And when you have a whole experience, it means acknowledging the good, the beautiful, and the wonderful with the ugly, the difficult, the scary, all of that, and reflecting on all of that. And you know what? I honestly think that acknowledging an experience as a whole experience is beautiful. That is beautiful, even with the ugly and the dark, it's beautiful. Because just think about how wonderful it is to be able to get in touch with yourself on that level. I think it's one of the most valuable things that you can do and it takes work every single day. It does not end. I do not anticipate this ending anytime soon because life is a continuous unfolding. You're constantly learning something new about yourself. Things are changing every day. Coming out also had its difficult and hurtful and painful moments for me. And there are still things that I am holding on to that I have faced, but I can't quite let go of. And like resentment, that is a tough one. Like thinking about this time last year and some of the people who were just really shitty to me in moments that mattered. And while I've moved on, I find that oh, there's this little pin of resentment that I'm still carrying around and those are things that I'm still working through. They haven't gone away just because I came out and I've acknowledged the experience and I have worked through it. There's still stuff hanging around and I'm gonna have to work through it again. One of the hardest things for me in terms of reflecting back on coming out is those moments where you hope that people would step up and they don't and you're left with disappointment, which then turns into resentment. At least that's how it worked for me. And that's a work in progress for me. It's also been really difficult to have my identity challenged every single day on any given platform on the internet and in my real life since the day that I came out. Whether it's people online saying that I am a liar and that I'm doing this for attention, or it's somebody that I just met and they can't handle the fact that I'm gay. They don't believe me because I don't look gay to them. I don't act gay to them, whatever that means. What I've realized through this experience of having my identity challenged every single day, something that I know to be true is that I think it's really dangerous to hold on to something that may have been true about you in the past. Maybe it wasn't even true at all. It, it was a truth that you made up for yourself and holding on to that. It's what I like to call holding on to what you should be and what you should be doing instead of opening yourself up to who you could be and what you could be doing. I think that's really dangerous because you are literally going like this and boxing yourself in. Whether it's about your sexual identity, your gender identity, or just anything. I think it can relate to literally anything in your life. I think if I had to take one thing away from this entire experience of coming out and pin down the most valuable thing that I have learned about myself is that it is so important to be open to be open to the possibilities and to not live in that land of, I should be doing this, I should be this person, I should, 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 or like, I would never do this, I would never do that. Because I did that 
for 26 years of my life and it is fucking miserable. It is so hard <laughs> to maintain that and it takes so much more energy to try and please other people than to step into who you are. It's a lot scarier to step into who you are, but once you do it and you start doing the work, I have just found myself to be so much more at ease and things that bothered me in the past no longer bother me now because I know that I am living my truth. And on this topic of openness, something that I have seen myself struggle with and also other people, some people just in my life, I've seen people talk about this online. It's this feeling of like if you identify as something now or if you believe something right now, you are married to that belief or that identity forever. And let's just think about how dangerous that could be be if that is no longer true, say like five years from now. It may be true in five years, it may be true for the rest of your life, and that's okay. And you know what else is also okay? If it's not the same in five years, if it is no longer your truth, even if it's no longer your truth tomorrow, that's okay too. And that is something that was really difficult for me to face and acknowledge because I'm a human being and I'm changing every single day and who I am now is not the same as the person that I'm gonna be tomorrow. And it's not the same as the person that I was yesterday. I think one of the most harmful things that I could do to myself is to close myself off yet again. After doing so much work to get to where I am, to say, I am going to stay this person that you see here today for the rest of my life. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna be this person, this exact me for the rest of my life. I want to change and I want to avoid Evolve. Coming out for me has been a mourning and grieving process of my past life and my past self, my past selves. I don't think there's any better way to describe it than mourning and grieving who you once were. It's sad, it's ugly, it's hard. And then you step into forgiveness and you find compassion and love for the person that you used to be, the people that you used to be. And that's when you find peace and you can find peace with who you are now. I think it's so wonderful that there's so much more acceptance in the world today. And what I would love to see, what I think is our next step, is opening up ourselves even more and not placing judgments on people for how they're living their lives today and how they choose to live their lives tomorrow. Because you know what? Someone else's life is not your life. And that is an important thing to remember. So in terms of my sexual identity, today I like identifying as gay. Sometimes I'll use the word lesbian. That is what is true for me right now, in my life right now as I sit here and speak to you. And it's really fucking scary to talk about this because there are so many people that will judge this and that is terrifying. <laughs> It is really scary for me, but I know that this is something that's important to talk about, so I'm doing it. Maybe a year from now, I will be sitting here saying, I prefer to identify as queer. I don't know who I'm going to be in the future. I only know who I am now, and I wanna keep myself open to the possibilities that are in front of me, because I've spent all of the rest of my life closing myself off, and I want you to know, if you feel like you need to be made married to an identity or an idea or a belief that is no longer true for you right now as you are sitting here in this moment, I want you to know that it is okay to let go of that and to step into who you actually are and to be okay with the possibility of that then again changing and that you're not alone and it's 100% okay no matter what anybody says to you about it, no matter how much people challenge you and it's going to suck and it's going to hurt, but it is okay, all of it. Another thing that people ask me a lot is how my family responded. In short, I choose to not have a relationship 
with the majority of my family. And that is my choice and my decision. I have a relationship with one person in my family and I'm happy with that at this point in my life. This hasn't been a perfect process for me and I've realized that it takes patience and it takes patience on both ends. I have to have patience with myself. I have to have patience with other people and it's a two-way street. Both sides have to be ready to come together if they're ever ready at all to form a new kind of relationship and I am not at that point. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. I did want to talk about it a little bit because it's something that's not easy. And I know that a lot of people struggle with this. I want to encourage patience and compassion, but that doesn't mean that you need to let people into your life if you don't feel safe and or you don't feel ready. It's a two-way street. This is something that I think I will touch on in more detail separately because there's so much to talk about. I would also love to make this a conversation with all of you about femme invisibility. Because one of the biggest things when I came out was, oh, she doesn't look like a lesbian. And a lot of that stems from these ideas that we have in terms of like what gay people look like, what they sound like, what they act like. And your idea Identity, like your sexual identity has nothing to do with the way that you look. Like you can choose to present yourself in any way and you can choose to identify in any way. And that goes outside of just sexual identity too. There's literally no combination that is wrong or not okay. And the way that I choose to present myself most of the time is in a more feminine way because that's what I like right now at this point in my life. I like this. <laughs> you know? If you are not familiar with the term femme invisibility, it basically means a lesbian who presents herself in a more feminine way and is then perceived to be heterosexual because of the way that she presents herself physically into the world. So people look at you and they don't see you as being gay. So that, that's where the invisibility thing comes in. A lot of times more feminine gay women will have encounters or altercations with heterosexual men. And sometimes they're fine and, you know, the men are just like, okay, like, didn't know, and that's cool, and it's a peaceful experience and fine. But there are other times where it can be really scary or just enraging because you are not seen. I think that's it. You're just not seen. <laughs> Like, doesn't everybody want to be like truly seen for who they are? And when you're not seen and you're perceived to be something else or somebody is questioning your identity or not believing you or insulting you to your face, it can be scary and it can just send you over the moon with rage. It is so frustrating because you also feel trapped at the same time. There's no guidebook for like how to handle a situation situation like this. When there is a heterosexual man who cannot wrap his head around the fact that you are gay and not interested in him, I have had reactions where people like literally just lose it because I'm no longer a prospect and they kind of just go into this spiral and I'm comfortable with who I am and I'm watching all of this unfold and it's really scary and sad to see that that whole spiral happening. Being affectionate with a woman in public and having men ogle you like your sexual objects, which already happens no matter what your sexual identity is. But if two women are being affectionate with each other, men will come up to you and treat you like these objects that are just there to please them. And that your kissing for their pleasure, it sucks. That, you know, goes beyond feminine visibility. That doesn't just happen to people who present themselves in a more feminine way. It's been really empowering to be able to learn how to stand up for myself in these moments, but it's also just heartbreaking and crushing afterwards too. Like you have this, oh, like I'm glad I stood up for myself in that moment, and then you go home and you're like, oh, just crying about it because it sucks. No one should ever have to feel like they are being treated as an object. And I am in a very privileged place. While I am a woman of color because 
I am half Asian. There are times where I quote unquote pass as a white person and I get the privileges of that. However, there are other times where I don't quote unquote pass as a white person and I experience racial discrimination on a whole new level. Not only am I a woman, but I am a woman of color and I am gay. There are things there that are very specific to my specific experience, which I can talk about in more detail separately because that is a large conversation. But something that has been really important for me is recognizing what cards are stacked against me and recognizing the cards in which I have privilege. To wrap all of this up, I'm human. I still have my bad days, and when I have them, they suck. But you know what? My good days are better than they've ever been. I am proud to be gay. I am proud to be open. I am proud to be me. I made a promise to myself last year that I would not apologize for who I am anymore. And I have stuck by that promise. I am giving myself my best chance and so should you.